We were talking about titrations. Uh, specifically, we we're talking about this titration here last time, which is a titration of a strong acid with a strong base. So something like our HCl plus sodium hydroxide going to a little sodium chloride plus some water. And remember that really in all titration curves, they're very similar looking. Uh, they typically have this sort of S shape here. Um, and there's really four important points along the way uh, that we talked about. There is really before you start the titration, there is basically before or when you give the very first drop to before the equivalence point. There is a pH at the equivalence point, which is sort of the third important spot. And then after you hit the equivalence point, sort of continuing on there is sort of the fourth important spot there in the titration curve, depending on sort of where you at or are at in the titration uh, as to how you should sort of solve these things. One really important thing that we talked about is the idea that obviously we are continuously adding volume, uh, which does mean that the molarity will continuously change, uh, but the moles do stay the same. So what that really means is when you do need to do an ice table in a titration sort of problem, uh, you do need to do that ice table in moles. And then after the first table, you should convert it back to molarity. It will put you in a good place for any other calculations uh, that you might have to do after that first ice table. Um, we also talked about that as you approach the equivalence point, as we can see in this graph, there's usually a pretty good jump in pH to the equivalence point, And that's usually followed by another sort of jump in pH past the equivalence point. And really that section, as we kind of come to the equivalence point, uh, basically tells us that we are going, as we talked about, really linear and straight up. And because we are going straight up, as we talked about, we are changing the pH a lot uh, with very little volume. And that's what we talked about with the idea of when you did titrations and you just added a drop and it went really dark pink very, very quickly from the one drop. And again, because something like phenolphthalein, which is a indicator, works over a pH range, by just adding that one drop was enough to change the pH by a lot. And that's why you saw sort of the indication of the dark pink color happen. But as we talked about, if you were really, really careful, you would have maybe been up here, but that is still in terms of volume, pretty much the same volume as the equivalent point. So um, any questions on any of that there? So why don't we try one here? Why don't we do, uh, what is the uh, pH? After, oh, let us do, um, what we do 29 milliliters of 0 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide is added to uh, 25 milliliters of 0 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid. All right, so take a moment or two and calculate that. I will as well. We'll see if we all end up in the same spot, hopefully. And again, in this titration, we are adding the base to the acid. So like we talked about previously here. Here, so obviously we are going to do our equation. So that's our HCl plus our sodium hydroxide uh, going to make our water and our sodium chloride. Once again, here we are doing a titration and uh, up in the burette is our sodium hydroxide in this case. And again, down in our beaker is our HCl. So uh, we are going to uh, do this ice table here in moles. So let us do that first. So moles of HCl would be converting our volume into liters, 0 0.025 times 0 0.1 gives us 0 0.0025 moles. Our sodium hydroxide also converting that into uh, liters, 0 0.029 times 0 0.1 gives us 0 0.0029 moles. And 
really nothing going on over here. <clears throat> at this point, uh, we could determine where we are at in the titration. Am I before, am I after, or am I at the equivalence point in this case? I am after, once again, this is what I started with. This is what I'm adding from the burette. And I definitely have more moles of what I'm adding than what I started with. Remember the equivalence point is the point where those two are equal to each other. So if you have more moles of what you're adding than what you started with, you're definitely past the equivalence point. That's important because the change here will actually be the HCL, right? It is the limiting reagent in this case because we are past the equivalence point, which means minus 0 0.0025 minus 0 0.0025 plus 0 0.0025. That means at equilibrium here, we got zero. Uh, we got uh, about that 0 0.0029 minus 0 0.0025, 0 0.0004, and 0 0.0025 here, moles. Any questions on the ice table here? At this point, we want uh, to convert these guys back into uh, molarity. So we're gonna look at total volume. We started with 25 milliliters. We added 29 milliliters. Uh, that means that our total volume at this point is 54 milliliters. That means we will take these guys and divide it by 0 0.054 liters. That gives me uh, 0 0.0004 divided by 0 0.054. Call it uh, 0 0.00741 molar. For our other guy, 0 0.0025 divided by 0 0.0540. 0 0.0461. Now, at this point, if you're not sure uh, what's going on, you want to maybe look at your ice table and see what you got left over. And I do have this guy and I do have this guy. Are these two things related to each other? They are not related to each other. They are not a buffer. So we have sodium chloride, which is a salt, right? And that is a special type of salt. It is a neutral salt, which means it's not going to really do anything with our pH. So really what we're left with at this point is a strong base, which definitely will do something with our pH. That means that this concentration we got here is actually the OH minus concentration, as that is a strong base, which is what we would expect because we're past the equivalence point. We're just dumping base into the beaker. That will allow us to calculate not the pH, but the pOH, which would be minus the log of the OH minus. That is minus the log of 0 0.00741. -er, and that is going to be minus log of 0 0.00741. I try to actually hit the right numbers. Try that 0 0.00741. There we go. That looks like a pOH of 2.13 which means our pH would then be 14 minus that. That would be 14 minus our answer here gets us like 1187 pH, which does make sense since we are past the equivalence point. We're dumping base in. We're at the top of the curve there, basically, is where we are at at this point. Any questions on that there? See how we did. 29 is like right in the middle there. So our number is right there. Not too bad. Any questions on strong gas or strong base titrations? So again, as we talked about, it's really important to understand where you are in the titration. It can really make the calculation a lot easier. All right, let's talk about the next type of titration, which is something maybe, there it is. So the next type of titration we're gonna talk about is a titration where we have a weak acid uh, with a strong base. So the setup here is uh, pretty much the same. Uh, we're gonna have our sodium hydroxide up in the burette. 
we are going to be adding it to our acetic acid in this example here, which is our weak acid. So we're going to add a strong base to our weak acid. And once again, we see a very similar curve. We see a very similar sort of S curve that occurs. And we really have the same four sort of sections on this uh, titration curve as before. We have really before we begin, we have once we start dropping some sodium hydroxide to right before we reach the equivalence point, we have the actual equivalence point. And once again, we have past the equivalence point. So again, there are these four sort of distinct areas. We also see the kind of sharp vertical rise as we come through the equivalence point here. Uh, so we again see that vertical leap and change in uh, pH happening a lot there. All right, so let's take a look at this one here and see how it might be a little bit different than the titration we just talked about before. So let's talk about each of these parts of it. And much like what we did before, I'm going to just kind of use made up numbers here, simple sort of numbers to follow. So at the very first part, this is really before we add any base. Now, in this situation, before we add any base, we have the weak acid here, right, in the solution. So if I wanted to uh, figure out the pH of a weak acid, how do I do it? We would need an ice table, yes? Yeah? So for example, in this example, we had acetic acid. We would need to break it apart into H plus and acetate. And I would need to do an ice table here. And I can do this in molarity because I haven't added any sodium hydroxide yet. So we could just use the molarity. These would be zeros. These would be minus Xs, plus Xs, plus Xs. These would be the initial molarity minus X, X and X. This would obviously, because it's a weak acid, we would also have a Ka value there. So this would go into our Ka expression. We obviously would solve for X in this case. And X in this case does equal the H plus concentration, which then means we could go into the pH at that point. So definitely a lot different than the strong acid situation because it's a weak acid, we actually need to do an ice table. Uh, again, you, you, you need to do it in molarity. So X and get your pH. So much different than the strong acid where you just go right into the pH equation and you get it. You got to do your little bit of work here. Because it's a weak acid, we also see if we look at our titration curve a little bit closer, we're kind of starting a little higher on the pH. And that again is because of the weak acid. So it's not going to give away as much H plus. So we see a little bit higher of a start in terms of our uh, initial pH there. Any questions on that there? All right, so then we're then gonna talk about the second part here. And the second part is basically from when we add our first drop, all the way through here to the equivalence point. So when we look at this for part number two here, this is before the equivalence point. And we have added some sodium hydroxide, our base in this case. So when we add the sodium hydroxide in this particular case, we are going to get a reaction between our acetic acid and our sodium hydroxide. And we will get a little sodium acetate on the double displacement reaction occurring and some good water there as well. Again, double displacement between those two guys. We will need to do an ice table here. 
should this ice table be in molarity or moles? This one should be in moles because obviously we have started the titration and we have obviously added some sodium hydroxide. So once again, I'm just gonna make up some numbers here. We're gonna say, obviously this is what we're starting with in the beaker. This is what we're adding, which means if I started with four moles of acetic acid and I'm before the equivalence point, should the moles of my base sodium hydroxide be less than, equal to, or greater than four? Should be less, because again, at the equivalence point, they're equal. So if you're not there yet, it is less, right? So you're getting yourself up there. So again, making up a number of two moles here for our sodium hydroxide and nothing going on over here. Much like in the previous one here, because at this point, the sodium hydroxide is the limiting reagent, uh, it's going to get used up because you got plenty of moles of the acetic acid to handle it. So the change here will be minus two, minus two, and plus two. That means when we do reach equilibrium here, we end up with two moles of this guy, nothing of this guy, and two moles of that guy. Any questions on the ice table here? So just like normal, it is, uh, as we talked about, good practice at this point. You would add up, obviously, your total volume, and we'll just convert these guys back into molarity by dividing by the liters, which obviously, once again, here would be our total volume at this point in the titration. Uh, will give us the molarity of this guy. We would also obviously do it for this guy over here. So once again, if we look at what we are left with at this point, we are left with this guy and we are left with this guy. Are these two guys related to each other? They are related to each other, right? Acetic acid is a weak acid and acetate is its conjugate base. So that is a weak acid and really the salt of its conjugate base that is also known as a Starts with a B, that is a buffer, yes, that is a buffer, right? Some of you maybe chose that as your buffer this morning, I hope, right? Some of, for some of you that have that. Uh, so that is a weak acid and conjugate base, so that is a buffer. So identifying that this is a buffer situation to find the pH means we could use our Henderson-Hasselbalch equation here, right? So we can use our Henderson-Hasselbalch equation in this case. We could also, just like we talked about before with buffers, we could lay up another ice table instead of the henderson Hasselbach if you so choose to do so. Uh, but either another ice table would be needed or the henderson Hasselbach. If you chose another ice table, sometimes people are like, what would that look like? Well, it would look like this. It would look just like the first ice table, pretty much. Almost, except that it's just appreciating. And if you chose to do this, the equilibrium concentrations here would become your concentrations here. And you would definitely would need one over here for it to be a buffer. The rest would be minus X plus X plus X. And obviously our molarity minus X, X and molarity plus X. That would go into our Ka expression. You would solve for X. X would equal the H plus concentration. You would then get the pH, which should match what you get here. So again, that's an alternative route. If you like that route better, you could take it. It should get you there. Again, just be cautious to make sure you got the initial on both sides. Otherwise, you will definitely get the wrong answer. You do not need to do both. So already we can see this is a very different sort of titration curve than the strong acid, strong base. We pretty much got buffer anywhere through here. So anywhere through here where you lay it up there in your titration and this type of titration will result in a buffer being formed and it is an acidic buffer, which by the way is part three of the experiment. That is how you make a buffer from a part of the buffer and a strong base. So that reaction would generate a buffer and uh, you will have it all the way through there. Any questions about that?
So then let's talk about what happens at the third part of this titration curve, which is the equivalence point. So you are at the equivalence point. So we will have our reaction here of our acetic acid in this example and our sodium hydroxide, our sodium acetate, and our water. So once again, uh, if we're starting with this guy, we're adding this guy. If I started with four moles of my acetic acid, because I'm at the equivalence point, the moles of my sodium hydroxide should be four moles. It should be exactly the same. That's basically your definition, right? Is the moles of the acid will equal the moles of the base at the equivalence point. And that gives you zero there. Once again, here, you can't really pick the wrong number. I shouldn't say that, but you ideally shouldn't be able to pick the wrong number here. There's only one number. In this case, it would be four and plus four moles on this side. That means at equilibrium, we got nothing, we got nada, we got four moles here. Once again, using our total volume, we can convert that back into molarity after we do the first table. Now, when we look at uh, what we got going on, we pretty much have this guy left. What is that sodium acetate is a, it is a salt, right? And basically when we have a salt, salts can go through what type of reaction? Could go through hydrolysis, right? We react it with water that's there. So we have to decide, will this salt go through hydrolysis? And the answer is, will this salt go through hydrolysis? This salt is basically made up of two things. It is made up of our sodium and our acetate. So we have sodium ions and we have acetate ions. Will the sodium ion go through hydrolysis? It will not. It's group one, right? Which means it comes from something strong. How about the acetate? The acetate will because it comes from our acetic acid, right? Which is a weak acid. And that means, as was said, the acetate will act as a base, right? Because it's his partner, basically. So what's going to happen in this part of the titration is you will generate a salt that will go through hydrolysis. So what happens after the first reaction here is you get a second reaction that takes place. And that is the acetate reacting with the water. And it's going to react as a base, which means it is going to grab the H plus from the water. When it does so here, we make acetic acid, which is good, is where it comes from. And we make hydroxide. So without finishing the calculation, this solution should be acidic, basic, or neutral. Should be basic here. Right, because we are generating OH minus. And if we are going to do a calculation, what type of K value should I use here? It should be a KB value. So again, in this type of problem, you probably only have the KA given to you because it's acetic acid. So once again, this would be a place where we would need to use our KA, KB equals KW, right? To flip it around or change it. Now we will do a second ice table here as required. It is the equilibrium concentration here that becomes our initial concentration here. So whatever we got on the first table at the end becomes our initial concentration at the beginning. Everybody else is zeros. We're going to do a minus X plus X plus X, which means at equilibrium initial molarity minus X x and x and as you mentioned this will go into our kb expression and once again you most likely will need to convert it out yourself to get the right value also important here is as we go through and solve for x 
in this case, X equals what? X equals the hydroxide concentration. That means that we could get the pOH from that, and then we got to get to the pH. So much, much different than the strong acid, strong base, where you just write seven because you have a neutral salt that's formed. Every single time you have this type of titration and you get to the equivalence point, you will always produce a salt, and that salt will always go through hydrolysis, and that salt will always produce hydroxide and it will always be basic at the equivalence point in this type of titration versus the strong acid, strong base, where it is a neutral pH of seven at the equivalence point. And that's what we see if we take a peek at the picture here, we come down. In this case, the equivalence point is like 8.72 in this particular example, which definitely is basic. Any questions on any part of that calculation there? So off to the fourth part, we hit the equivalent point. Maybe our indicator changes color, but you are not disturbed by that. You say, I still have some sodium hydroxide up there. I'm gonna keep adding. So let's talk about what happens once we get past the equivalence point, which is the fourth part of the curve. So as you move past the equivalence point, we are still going to get our reaction of our acetic acid and sodium hydroxide. And once again, gonna give us our sodium acetate and our water here. Uh, so once again, we started with this guy, we are adding this guy. And if initially we had four moles of our acetic acid, which once again, we do need to do it in moles because we're still adding volume at this point. The moles of my sodium hydroxide should be less than equal to or greater than four. In this case, it should be greater than four. So we'll go with six here and zero. At this point, we get the same sort of change that we talked about a second ago. In this case, now the acetic acid is actually the limiting reagent because frankly, you're just dumping base in there. That means that the change here will be the acetic acid that means at equilibrium nothing of that we got two moles of this guy four moles of this one once again we're just going to do proper stuff here which means when i'm done with this table i'm going to turn it back into molarity by dividing by the total volume at this point we take a look at our ice table which can always be very helpful to us we have sodium acetate left over and we have sodium hydroxide is this a buffer this is not a buffer again just because you got two numbers doesn't make it henderson hasselbach worthy yes so these are two bases really right the sodium acetate at this point will go through hydrolysis and act as a base. And our sodium hydroxide is a strong base, obviously. Now at this point in this type of titration, out of the two, which one should be the stronger base? Should be the sodium hydroxide. And because sodium hydroxide is the stronger base, it is going to be the major contributor to the pH in this case, because pretty much all sodium hydroxide has to do is go for a swim and it's going to create OH minus, right? The acetate's got to go find the water. It's got to go do a little reaction. You know, it's kind of like a weaker base. So what we do in this case is we actually will ignore the contribution of the salt at this point and the major contributor here is going to be our strong base, which means that this concentration will actually be the hydroxide concentration, which once again will get you to the pOH and get you to the pH at this point. So again, very different sort of titration curve in terms of how you take care of it uh, because of what you're dealing with. You've got that weak acid in there, which creates a little bit of different results as you go through it. Any questions at this point here? 
So when we look back at this seemingly nice little curve here, again, the four parts. First part, you need one ice table done in molarity because you haven't added anything. Just a regular solve for X. X equals the H plus concentration, and that gets you to the pH. At the second point, you need two ice tables, or at least uh, one ice table. One ice table done in moles because you're adding. The result of that ice table will always give you a buffer, and it'll always be an acidic buffer, by the way. And you can, or mostly acidic buffer, I suppose. Um, you will get a buffer, which means secondary to that, you can do a henderson hasselbach equation or a secondary ice table. So either two ice tables at this point or an ice table in henderson hasselbach that is the move. At the third part of this type of titration requires one ice table done in moles. The result of that table is to give you the concentration of your salt that will go through hydrolysis and then requires a second ice table for sure, which is a hydrolysis ice table. And you will solve for X, which will be the hydroxide concentration, getting you the POH and then to the pH. And lastly, in the fourth part here, you need one ice table. The result of that ice table is really to see how much of the strong base you're dumping in there. You get the concentration of the strong base, so you can get the POH and then to the pH at that point. Any questions on any of those parts? Why is it good to know where you are in the titration? Because if you know where you are in the titration, before you start the calculation, you should actually know what type of calculation you are doing. Although there are four different types of calculations here, they are all calculations we have done already. You just have to know how to do it correctly, yes? So if you find yourself before the equivalence point, you know you should be doing a buffer problem. If you're at the equivalence point, you should be doing a hydrolysis problem. If you're past the equivalence point, you should be doing a strong base problem. And if you're at the start, you should be doing a KA problem. So these are all problems that we've done before. And if you know where you are, you should be able to do pretty much the problem without having to think too much about it. Sometimes that's good not to have to think. Problem most people have is they jump in and have no clue where they are. And they just go, I got numbers. And like, I have two numbers. So I'm just going to keep using the henderson hasselbach equation. Good news is you'll hit one out of four times, right? Right. But hopefully it's the right situation. All right. Well, well that was fun. So let's talk about uh, doing one of these here. See how it all works. Why don't we do, um, why don't we do, What is the pH here of this titration we just talked about? I just saw on that curve. What is the pH after 23 and a half milliliters of 0 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide is added to 25 milliliters of 0 0.1 molar acetic acid. Ka value for acetic acid, 1.8 times 10 to the minus five. All right, take a couple minutes here, see what you come up with. I'll do it as well. And again, hopefully we will come up with these same answers, I hope. Okay, let's take a look and see how we're doing. So obviously we're doing a titration. Again, the setup here is, uh, as we've been talking about, uh, we got our, again, our sodium hydroxide up in the burette. Uh, we got our acid here on the bottom and we're adding our sodium hydroxide to our acid. So we are going to get a reaction that's going to occur. So obviously it's going to be our acetic acid here and our sodium hydroxide reacting, giving us our sodium acetate and our water in this case. Once again here, since we are obviously doing a titration, uh, we want to uh, do everybody in moles. So initially here, we want to convert our 25 milliliters into liters. So that's 0 0.025 times 0 0.1 gives us uh, 0, 0.0. We'll do the same thing here for our sodium hydroxide. So we're going to convert our 23.5 into 0 0.0235 times 0 0.1 
gets us 0 0.00235 moles and zero of this guy. Any questions on how we got those numbers there, right? A reminder, this is how we get those numbers. Here's cancel. So convert to liters times it by the molarity, right? Gives me moles. So volume times molarity gives me moles. Yeah, any questions on that? Okay, so at this point, uh, again, this is uh, what we're starting with. Uh, this is what we're adding. So the first uh, double jeopardy question is, am I before, after, or am I at the equivalence point? I am before the equivalence point here. What I am adding is less moles than what I started with. That means I am coming up to the equivalence point basically, right? But I haven't got there yet because they're not equal. So I'm definitely before the equivalence point, which is good things to know, right? I guess that's before the equivalence point abbreviation, I guess. All right, before the equivalence point. That means that when we look at it, the sodium hydroxide here is still the limiting reagent. So that is going to be the change that's going to occur. And the logical, it is the smaller number is a good thing to remember as well. So 0 0.00235 moles and plus 0 0.00235 moles. That means when we reach equilibrium here, we got 0 0.0025 minus 0 0.00235. Uh, gonna give us 0 0.00015 moles, uh, zero of that guy and 0 0.00235 moles here. At this point, uh, we do wanna go and convert back to molarity. So we do need to get the total volume here. So in this case, we had uh, 25 milliliters and we added 23 and a half milliliters to that. Uh, that's gonna give us 48.5 milliliters, I believe. Converting that to liters would give us 0 0.0485 liters, right? Divide by a thousand, or as they say. So that gives us uh, this divided by 0 0.0485 gets us a molarity here of 0 0.00309. And on the other side there, we end up with 0 0.0485 molar, we'll call it. Any questions so far? Now, at this point, we could look and see what we got left. I got uh, this guy left and I got this guy left. Are they related to each other? They are related to each other. They are a buffer. And I knew I should end up with a buffer because I am before the equivalence point, right? So I know I should be doing a buffer problem even before I got there. It's good I actually got there, I suppose, right? So at this point, again, you do have the two options. You could do another ice table if you wanted to, but again, probably the less chance of error way would be to go into the henderson hasselbach equation at this point. Uh, so that is what we're going to do here, the pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. Uh, we do need to calculate the pKa value here. So that is going to be minus the log of the Ka, which was 1.8 times 10 to the minus five. That gets us a 4.74 for our pKa value, giving us 4.74 plus the log. The base here is the sodium acetate, right? So that is gonna go up on top, 0 0.0485 uh, divided by 0 0.00309. So here we go, let's see how we did. 0 0.0485 divided by 0 0.00309, a little log action on it. And we're going to add that to a 474. Gets us, I will call it like a 5.9, I guess with my rounding there, 5.94 pH. Any questions on that there? 
it works as long as you use the Henderson Ossoboff equation. It, it works. So remember that, as we talked about, I think in lab, you, if you are using specifically the Henderson Ossoboff equation, when you do the base divided by the acid, the liters cancel out, the milliliters cancel out, they can actually cancel out. So you can actually do it in moles, which is why today when we were doing the calculations, we could do it in moles instead of molarity and stuff like that. If you are not using the Henderson Oswald equation, but ice stable in it, uh, it will not come out right. Yeah, so you need the molarity. So it's always a good idea to convert it back to molarity um, because you'll always be in good shape if you do that. And it works. You'll be okay if it's uh, the Henderson Oswald equation. But if you were going to continue on and do something like a hydrolysis problem, like at the equivalence point, you would not be okay either. So always good to, do, to kind of convert it out. But the truthful answer is if you use the Henderson Ossebach, you could throw moles up there, you could throw molarity on, up there, they will come out the same. You know? Other questions? <clears throat> okay, and uh, we got there 5.94. So we were like, uh, in between here, I think. So that's in between, that's not bad. All right, so we didn't do too bad. Any questions on this type of titration here? All right, well, I feel like we have one more titration to talk about here first. Let us talk about a third type of titration curve, which looks like it's upside down because it is. Right. And this is actually a titration of a strong acid with a weak base. So the setup here is a little bit different. In this case, we're actually going to have the strong acid in the burette. And we're going to add it to the base. So that's a little bit different. We're adding acid to base. That is why this curve looks upside down because we are starting with a base and we're adding acid, which means our pH is going down. Still really the S curve, just upside down, basically. So this type of titration curve, much like all the other ones, have really the same four areas. We have our first spot there before we start the titration. We have our spot until we reach the equivalence point. We have our equivalence point spot and then past the equivalence point in this case. So really the same sort of four spots on this curve uh, that we had before. But because we are adding obviously an acid to a base and we're starting with a base, we will get slightly different results in terms of pH as we go through these points. So let us talk about what happens here at the very opening spot. And that is before we add any acid in this case. So before we add any acid in this case. So before we add any acid in this particular case, really the only thing that we have in our beaker here is our weak base. So that is really the only thing that we have going on in our beaker. And if we have a weak base like NH3, how would we solve for the pH? you need to do a ice table and a KB problem since it's a base, right? So we basically have to do a KB problem in this case. So we would have to do an ice table and it would be really like a KB type problem. We would take our ammonia, which in this example is our weak base, react a little, a little bit of water because it's a weak base is going to accept the H plus and the result of that is you end up with NH4 plus and OH minus. Or if you want, you can stick them together and get NH4, OH, same thing. In this case here, we will uh, do an ice table and we can do it in molarity because we have not added anything. So whatever the concentration of the weak base is, we're good to go. We're gonna do a little bit of zeros there. We'll do our minus Xs or plus Xs which means our initial minus X, X, and X in this case. At this point, again, it will go into our KB expression. We will solve for X. And a reminder, since this is a base, the X here will equal the hydroxide concentration. 
and that will get you to the POH and then off to the pH at that point. So this is very similar to the previous titration we did, except that we were starting with a weak acid. And this one, you're starting with a weak base. So you both requires one ice table done in molarity as a KB type problem, where you'll get the hydroxide concentration, the POH, and then to the pH. Obviously, we would expect the pH here to be basic since we're starting off with a weak base in this case. So you should end up with a basic pH. So if you screw up and think that your pOH was your pH, it is wrong, right? Because that would be like a lower number. So you should definitely end up with a higher number. Any questions on that there? So as we start adding in this case, we're adding some acids. So along here, all the way to the equivalence point is the second part of this titration. So let's talk about what happens there. So this is before the equivalence point. We're adding acid in this case. So when we do that in this particular example, we will get a reaction between the base and our strong acid. That is going to give us NH4 plus Cl minus. You could also put them together as ammonium chloride and H4Cl. I'm going to keep it separated so we can kind of see all the parts of it, but you can keep it together if you choose to do so. Clearly here, we are going to need an ice table and we are going to need to do it in moles. So here, once again, we are actually starting with this guy and we are adding this guy. So I'm going to pick my four moles. Since once again, I am before the equivalence point, the moles of the HCl in this case should be less than, right? Because we're not at the equivalence point, we're before there. So we'll make up our two moles and zero. Change here going to be the two moles as it's the limiting reagent in this case. Gets us at equilibrium, two moles of this guy, nothing of this guy two moles of this guy. By the way, why did I ignore this guy? Cl minus is a neutral salt. So again, no need to put something there that you might want to use wrongly. Just leave it alone. At this point here, we will do like we've been doing. We will take our total volume. We will convert these guys back into molarity. And once again, if we do look at our ice table to help us out as to where we are or what we are dealing with, we see that we have this guy left and we have this guy left. Are they related to each other? They are now because I drew a line, but other than my line, are they related to each other? They are, right? We have a weak base, which is NH3, and we have this conjugate acid in this case, which is NH4+. Plus. Also, for some of you, what you chose this morning, hopefully, yes? So this, again, is a buffer in this case. And because it is a buffer, we once again can go into our Henderson-Hasselbach equation or again, you can do a second ice table. In this case, you actually have a couple of options how you could do the second ice table. You could either do it as NH4 plus as an acid using the Ka value, or you could do it as NH3 as a base using a Kb value. If you do it as a base, that means you get hydroxide and got to do pOH and then to the pH. If you do it obviously as an acid, it will go directly into H plus. So if you do the ice table, Actually, you could do it a couple of different ways. Most importantly here as well, if you were doing this problem, you most likely have what value given to you? You have a K, B value given to you. So that's also really important here when we use our Henderson-Hasselbach equation. You need to do one of two things. You need to take that K, B value, convert it to a K, A, to convert it to a P, K, A, or you could convert that to a P, K, B, right? And subtract 14 to get yourself to a pKa value. However you want to do that, remember that the pKa plus the pKb equals 14. So that's an alternative way that you could go there as well. But you got to make sure that you have the pKa value here. 
if you are using the henderson hasselbach equation and again more importantly you got to have the base on top and the acid on the bottom for some of you this morning that was a flipped situation right so you got to make sure that you have it in the right spot in this case it would be the nh3 here would be our base and the nh4 plus when comparing two things that are related to each other that are a buffer the one that is the acid should have one more h plus right because it is the one that's going to give the h plus yeah so that's again a good way to recognize when you have a pair that are related to each other and you want to determine which one's the acid and which one's the base. Again, typically the acid here will have one more H plus, which is what we see here with NH4 plus, right? That's the one more H plus there. Any questions on that? So part two, our second part of the citation curve is exactly like what we saw before. Anywhere in this region, before you reach the equivalence point, anywhere through here, you will result in a buffer. The difference is it's actually going to be most likely a basic buffer in most cases. Could again dip into the acidic range, but towards the equivalence point, but definitely will have more of a basic buffer sort of situation happening. Uh, so again, it requires one ice table to get yourself to the buffer components. And then you can obviously um, do the Henderson Hasselbach. By the way, as we saw in the previous titration curve where we took acetic acid and we reacted it with a strong base, a weak acid with a strong base, we created a buffer. In this case, we reacted a weak base with a strong acid and we created a buffer. Also part three of the experiment is this one right here. Yeah, so this is a way that if you took, say, NH3 and then added the HCl to it, we could actually produce a buffer. Just so you're clear, the buffer doesn't happen until all the HCl is gone. It happens at the very end. And that's why the buffer is technically not made up of a strong acid, but we could use a strong acid to make the buffer. And the buffer is really what's left over at the equilibrium line there when everything was done. Any questions on that there? <clears throat> all right, then speaking of the equivalence point there, let's talk about what happens here when we reach the equivalence point. And that is the third part of the titration curve, and that is at the equivalence point, which basically means our moles are going to equal each other, right, of our acid and base. So we'll have our NH3, we'll have our HCl, we'll have our NH4+, plus and our Cl- minus here. <laughs> So once again, we're going to use moles here. So we'll use our same starting moles here since we are starting with this guy, four moles. We are adding this guy here. Once again, because we're at the equivalence point, we for sure know that these numbers should be the same. So we will have four moles of that guy, nothing of this guy. Change here will be minus four, minus four and plus four here gives us zero, zero, and four moles. Once again, I'm ignoring my chloride as it's not going to do anything. I'm going to take my total volume, convert that guy back into a molarity. And once again, not much left over at this point. We have this guy here. That guy is a, it is a salt really, ammonium chloride, right? And it's the part of a salt that will go through hydrolysis because it comes from this weak base, right? So because it comes from that weak base over there, it will be relatively strong. And as you said, it will act as a acid. So much like what we see happening there at the equivalence point in the previous titration, we will then have that salt part of it there reacting as an acid with water in a hydrolysis reaction because it's acting as an acid it's going to donate over the h plus to the water when it does so we make where it came from which is always what happens and we make h3o plus here and once again we can make a pretty safe prediction this ph should be acidic because we're producing h3o plus plus. 
And we also should be using our K A value. And once again here, you will probably be given the KB. So you'll have to do the flip of it at that point. Once again, this is actually going to be a molarity type table, which is why you definitely want to make sure you convert back to molarity there. Uh, you got your molarity, you got your zeros, you got your minus X's, plus X's. Molarity minus X, X and X. Once again, going into a KA value table there, which means you will solve for X. X will equal the H plus concentration, which means you can get the pH at that point. So much like the previous titration curve here, you will at the equivalence point in this type of titration, always produce a salt that will go through hydrolysis because it's coming from a weak base. And that salt will always go through hydrolysis and produce H plus basically, or H3O plus. And it should always be acidic at this point. So no matter what kind of combination there, a weak base and strong, uh, I'm sorry, weak uh, base and strong acid you throw in there, you should always hit a salt that will go through hydrolysis because it's coming from the weak base. Any questions on that there? So as you can see here, much like the last one requires two ice tables, first ice table really to get the concentration of the salt, second ice table hydrolysis reaction to get the pH. Any questions on that there? All right, one last spot here on my curve. Once again, the equivalence point does not stop you. You still have your HCl in your burette and why not use it? So let's talk about what happens after the equivalence point here. So after the equivalence point, uh, we're going to get our reaction of NH3 and our HCl. Gonna get us our NH4 plus and our Cl minus. All right, so initially here using our same setup here of four moles, because we are after the equivalence point, we definitely have more of the HCl. So we'll just use thing here. Once again, at this point, we're pretty much just dumping HCl in there, which means it's the excess reagent. So we get the switch that occurs that now the actual NH3 here is the limiting. So that should be the change, minus four, minus four and plus four. That means at equilibrium, we got nothing of this guy, a couple of moles of this guy, and four moles of this guy. Any questions on that table there? <clears throat> now, once again, we're going to take the total volume, convert us back to molarity here. And now we want to see what we got left. So we got NH4 plus, uh, we got some HCl related to each other. No, again, not a buffer, not because you got two numbers. We again have two things as we just saw, we got a salt that will go through hydrolysis and basically act as an acid. But we also again here have our strong acid and once again, obviously HCl is a much stronger acid than ammonium because again, it just needs to go in and it will produce H plus. So just like we did in the last one, we will ignore the contribution here of the salt. And it really is this strong acid that is going to be our major contributor to the pH. And that means that the strong acids concentration is the H plus concentration and that will then allow you really to go directly into your pH at this point. So much like the last one here, you need a uh, ice table on the back end here. The purpose of this ice table is to figure out how much of your strong acid you have left over. And again, because it's a strong acid, pretty much that's going to be your H plus concentration. Go directly into your pH and you have it at that point. Any questions on any part of that titration curve? Much like the other one, if you kind of know where you're at, you should know what type of problem you're doing in this titration curve. Pretty much at the beginning, it's a KB problem. Uh, before the equivalence point, it's a basic buffer problem. Uh, and at the equivalence point, it's a hydrolysis problem. And past the equivalence point, it's a strong acid problem, basically. Yeah, so 
all these are things that we have done before. And all these are things that you should know how to do. The major problem that I, I said before that most people have is they don't know where they're at. They don't know what's going on. They don't know which one to choose. Yeah. So you got like four different things to choose from. You got to choose correctly. So that's why it's really important to understand where you're at, what's happening during that process so that you could choose the calculation correctly, hopefully. Yeah. If you kind of know where you're going, they say, it's a lot easier to get there, right? Rather than just jump in and hope to get there, right? Although we do drive that way sometimes, right? Jump in, we'll get there. It's like around the corner somewhere. It's kind of here. That building looks somewhat familiar, right? Any questions on any of that there? All right, let's talk about a couple of things.